Hi guys, I am back with another video. My apologies for um, taking so long to make another one, but anyone who does home health knows that there's a lot of charting involved. So that's what I've been busy doing, charting. Um, if you wanna ask me what my absolute worst, what I hate worst about home health, charting would be it, hands down. That is the number one thing that I absolutely cannot stand. Okay, so if you're gonna go into home health, charting is something that you need to take into consideration because you do charting on your own time. You do not get paid for charting. I was saying 15 years I worked for one company who gave us an hour per pay period. They just paid us an hour's worth of pay and that was to compensate us for having to come into the office to fax you know, certain orders, um, to add things into people's charts, things of that nature. But I'm telling you, let's say, let's say I see 30 patients in a week. Best believe on Sunday, I am spending all day charting, not just an hour, not just two hours, I want to say I probably spend a good six to eight hours charting. Um, I have tried to find a way around this. So, okay, okay, let me back up. So when you work for home health, they either have paper charting or electronic charting. And they both have their pros and cons. So, Paper charting, it's like a, a form that you'll take with you when you see your patient. And as you do your visit, you're just, you know, you do the vitals, you write them in. You write down any pertinent information that happens. Um, you just jot it all down. And so when you leave, your charting's pretty much done. You might have to go back and fill in some minor details but yeah, it's pretty much done. The downside to paper charting is, depending on the company, some people, some companies want their charting turned in every 48 hours. So if you work for a company that has paper charting and they want the paperwork every 48 hours and the office is 40 minutes away from your house, you're just running back and forth from the office, it gets to be a hassle, especially trying to coordinate uh, dropping off paperwork with your visits. I mean, the office closes, they might not be open all the time. Um, one of the companies that I've worked for that did do paper charting, they had uh, some drop boxes uh, spaced out. Okay, so yeah, they had um, some spots where you could drop off your charting. So if you lived on one end of town, like it was a central location to, to do your drop off, I will say on average, most companies want charting done every week. Like um, paperwork's due every Monday by a certain time. Some it's 12 o'clock, some before the office closes. So it becomes, it's, it's a hassle when they want paper charting. Like you, you gotta drive all over town. But on the flip side, I want to say now 90% of companies that I've worked for, uh, yeah, about 90% have switched over to electronic charting. Um, they have what they call EMRs, which are electronic medical records. So I can access my patient's chart from anywhere, which, which is great. Um, these companies also require that you have a cell phone so, or some type of electronic, like a tablet, cell phone. That way you have access to patient records while you're out and about, while you're out in the field. It's very convenient. So when I go see a brand new patient, um, let's say they call me and say, hey, Raquela, we've got this patient. Um, can you see them? And I'm like, when? And they say, today. Is there any way you can see them today? Yes, I can see them today. You know why? Because I have access like instantly to their, to their records. Um, send me the patient's information, I go to the app, I type in their information and 
the plan of care pops up. I can see their diagnoses. I can see their H and P. I can see who their doctor is. I can see their allergies. Everything's right there. So that is uh, one of the plus, one of the one of the benefits to electronic charting. But with that being said, it is difficult to do charting while you're doing while you're doing a visit i have tried it it takes away from my interaction with my patients i do know a lot of clinicians that carry around a laptop they carry around their tablet and while they're doing their visit they do all their charting right then and there i also know that patients don't really care for that they feel like you're more focused on your laptop or your computer, your laptop or your phone than you are with them. And you gotta remember, uh, when you're doing home health, most most of your patients, they're they're old people, they're geriatrics. They're not with technology. Like they a lot of them despise it. So when you come in and you're on your phone, they automatically are just like, you know, they, they don't have a real good relationship with technology. So I have found that trying to chart during visits does not work. Um, I also tried keeping my laptop or my phone with me in the car. And so I go do my visit. And then after I leave, I can do my charting before I go to my next patient. Doesn't work for me because I want to say on average, if you're new to home health, it's going to take you a good 35, 45 minutes to do one note, that's, that's what we call um, a visit. You do a visit note. If you've got six or seven patients to see in a day and it's taking you 45 minutes to chart after the visit, do you know how long your day is gonna be? Like, you don't have time to do that. So most home, home health nurses, they do their visits and then they do their charting when they get home. Um, if you're anything like me, by the time you have been working out in the field for eight or nine hours that day, when you get home, the last thing you want to do is spend three or four hours charting. Like you're exhausted. Um, in your head, it sounds good. Like, yeah, I'm going to go see my patients and then I'm going to get home. I'm going to do my charting. I'm never going to fall behind. Real life doesn't work that way you get home if you've got kids you've got extracurricular activities you got to do dinner you got to do that by the time the end of the day comes you are tired so so yes um i have tried to get out of this habit but if charting is due on monday i probably spend all day sunday doing it I do work for one company who uses uh, an EMR system called Perfect, and I will say hands down that is by far my my favorite software to work with. They actually have an app, and uh, I can do that during my visit. I can't type out a whole note, but I can pull up vital signs, and as I'm doing vital signs, I can enter them in. So then when it comes time for me to do my charting, when I go home and open up this software on my desktop, the vitals are already in there. Any pertinent information is already in there from when I was there during the visit. It took all of five minutes. My patient doesn't feel like I didn't give them one-on-one um, -on -one time. And then I can just type in whatever I need and electronically sign and then call it a day what else can i think of when it comes to documentation okay so like i said when you're new to this charting is probably going to take up most of your time you're probably going to get frustrated you're probably going to be like to heck with this because i will say when you work in a facility you do all your charting there before you leave so when you go home you are, I mean, you're, you're done unless you're on call. That is, so that's one of the things I hate about home health is charting. Um, another con that I didn't mention in one of my previous videos is when you do home health, you have patients. These are your assigned patients. Usually you're the only nurse that is seeing this patient. 
So with that being said, when something is wrong with this patient, who do they call? They call you. Patients don't really care about your family knife. Um, there's a few who take into consider who take that into consideration and they, they call during normal like business hours. But it is not uncommon for my phone to ring at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the morning. I mean, they call 24 7 and it's over any and everything it'll be one in the morning and i'll get a phone call and i'm thinking it's going to be some emergency and you call like hey sweetie um i haven't had a bowel movement in two days you thought that warranted calling me at two in the morning oh sweetie i didn't even know what time it was is it two in the morning yeah it's two in the morning so to avoid that problem you can either one, not give your patients your personal phone number. You do not have to give them your personal phone number. You can have them go through the office whenever they need to call you. So most companies have um, someone who's on call, they have an all call agency that takes phone calls and then you'll get the messages in the morning. I have found this to be problematic because I don't get my messages in time. I tried not giving patients my phone number and having them call the office, but offices suck with communication because they're swamped and they're busy. So I might have a patient that calls the office at let's say five in the morning to let the office know, hey, could you not have my nurse come today because my daughter came in town and she's taken me to such and such. You know how many times I go to a patient's house and I they're not there and they're like, oh, sweetie, well, I let the office know. And then I call the office like, did such and such call you? And like, oh, yes, they did. We're so sorry. We never got around to calling you. Yes. She said that uh, she needed to cancel today's appointment like for real so I find that it's easier to coordinate uh, my schedule and my patients care if they have my direct number it just is easier for me that's happened way too many times and I just prefer my patients to call me so um, another thing you can do get a Google voice number so you don't have to have two phones set up a Google voice number give your patients the Google voice number and when you're not accepting calls, you can just, you know, silence it or have it forwarded, forwarded to a voicemail. I also have a message on my voicemail that says, um, basically, hey, I can't get to the phone right now. Please leave a message and I'll return your call at my earliest convenience. If this is a medical emergency, call 911. Because you'll be surprised how many people call me at 2, 3 in the morning with symptoms of having a heart attack. I don't know what you think I can do at one in the morning if you're about to have a heart attack. You need to go call 911. Like there's nothing I can do for you. <laughs> but it never fails when you build a relationship. Sometimes they're, they're not sure. They don't know like, is this something that's just gonna pass? Is, do I need to go to the ER? And um, when you build up a rapport with certain patients, there are certain patients that I know if they call at two, three in the morning, something is wrong. I will answer my phone because I mean, I, I honestly do care. So when they tell me, hey, you know, I it feels like something's sitting on my chest. I can't breathe. I've got a headache. Uh, it feels like my eyeballs are about to pop out of my head and this ringing in my ears won't go away. And I say, you call 911 and you get to the emergency room right now. Okay, so I kind of got off on a tangent. This video was <laughs> supposed to be about charting. So when you first start starting off, charting will take the majority of your time. Um, there are some ways to minimize this time. So there is a website. It is called Nurse Teachings, uh, nurseteachings.com. It has a list, um, it has a search bar, and you can type in whatever problem, whatever diagnosis your patient may have. And down below will pop up 
a bunch of nursing documentation that you can copy and paste into your charting. Um, don't just copy and paste and leave it. Actually read through because sometimes there's pronouns included. If your patient is a female and what you copy and paste it is like he this and he that, go and change it to she. Um, also add in whatever pertinent information that you need. Um, so what I do is I have a Word document and, um, you know, scratch that. It's not Word anymore. Now I use Google Docs. It used to be a Word document. Now I have a file in Google Docs and it, I just call it charting documentation and I have an alphabetical order, a list of every possible diagnosis that you can think of. So in home health, you have, in order to be reimbursed by Medicare, you have to do some type of patient teaching. There has to be some type of education involved and you have to document the education that was given to the patient. For example, um, if your patient has hypertension, you would teach on signs and symptoms of a hypertensive crisis and when to seek appropriate medical attention. This is a teaching that you will give every single patient that you ever encounter that has a diagnosis of hypertension. So whatever teaching that you give, I put this in my Google Doc because it's not going to change. The teaching is going to be the same whether my patient's male, female, whether I had a patient five years ago, whether I'm going to have a patient in 10 years. There's certain signs and symptoms that will just always be and will always be applicable to whatever patient you have. So I have a document that has all these teachings. So um, when it comes time to chart, and I did that, and I, and I teach them all the same thing so it doesn't change. When I'm doing my note, I will copy and paste that into my note, and then I will add pertinent information. Um, patient is an 89-year-old female with a history of hypertension. A uh, skilled nursing instructed patient on signs and symptoms of hypertensive crisis. Then I will go copy and paste my teaching. That cuts my charting down by, I want to say, 80% because if you have to type out the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, you're gonna be charting for hours. So just a tip, get some type of Word document, copy and paste uh, your teachings into there. So as you're charting, you can just copy and paste and then just change whatever uh, pertinent information needs to be changed and add whatever relevant information needs to be added. That will save you hours and hours and hours of documentation. And don't forget to go to nurseteachings.com and um, just play around in there this in the search bar. Just type in different diagnoses and see the different types of teachings that come up. It's also good, like if you're a new nurse and you don't know about a certain diagnosis, you don't know what to teach your patient, type it in there. It'll give you information on what you can teach your patient. So uh, if there's any questions, please uh, ask them in the comments so I can make more videos. And I am going to end this and then start another video. I will see you guys soon. Don't forget to like my video and hit subscribe. Thank you guys.